Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here with another detailed update on your weather forecast as we are keeping an eye on two upcoming winter storms that could bring quite a bit of snow for the Midwest the Great Lakes, the Northeast, with more severe weather for the Deep South on Tuesday into Wednesday. Also, if you're new to the YouTube channel and you really like these detailed weather videos, please consider subscribing if you're new, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. So here's a look at the latest satellite imagery from Radar Omega, and we can see we have two areas circled in that I have put up here on the screen so you guys could better see with what I'm talking about. The first and foremost one is being over the four corners. That's the main area of circulation that is going to transpire to this next snowstorm over the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and also for the Northeast. And the moisture across the Deep South there over Southern Texas, that's also the other circled area. That is gonna collide with this colder air mass to the North, and this is gonna really kickstart that snowstorm, the first in a couple of systems that are gonna be impacting the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast through the middle to the end of next week. So with that being said, let's take a look at our latest European model that just got done rendering just about an hour and a half ago. And this is for Friday evening, January the 20th, 2023 right around, say, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 o'clock Central Time, just to get your bearings straight. And also, the time and date is above my head, so make sure you refer to that also on the top right side of the screen. So, this look at the model for this afternoon, and we can see where the snow is going to be developing over the four corners. That's the system that you see there on the bottom right side of the screen, that winter storm over the four corners. That is going to be moving into the high planes by the time we go into Saturday morning. This is right around 6 o'clock Central Standard Time, January 21st, and we can see there's a good band of snow coming down there across southeastern Colorado into Kansas, and this is going to transit the area throughout the day Saturday into the Midwest. So like central and northern Missouri, central and northern um, portion there of Kansas, central and southern Iowa, as well as southeastern Nebraska by about 9 and 10 o'clock um, Saturday, and you're going to be seeing the snow move in across the area. Now, there's not enough dynamics here for severe weather for the southeast. Maybe a marginal risk at the very most, but there's going to be some light to moderate rainfall with the most intense thunderstorms that do develop. More kind of a general to marginal risk for severe weather. Nothing too out of control or out of hand. And the snow with this is going to be fairly light for Illinois and for southern portion of Wisconsin. Probably only two to four inches at the very most, maybe even a little lesser. That's some very light blue colors and that indicates snow rates gonna not be very much at all, less than maybe an inch an hour at the very most. So that's gonna transit the Great Lakes by the time we go into Sunday morning. So when you're waking up in the morning, like right around nine or 10 o'clock uh, for Sunday, January the 22nd, that's where the snow is gonna be. And then the moisture and the dynamics really get more strong here for the Northeast. That's when the snow rates do pick up a little bit. If you're in Pennsylvania, if you're in New York, if you're in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, if you are in say even portions here of the Appalachians where you do got a little bit of freezing rain and a little bit of sleet that could be accumulating here in some of the valleys. And again, that would be for about nine to 10 o'clock on Sunday, just before Monday. And then by the time we go into Monday for your morning commute, if you're an early riser, like 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., you're going to be waking up to quite a bit of snowfall over central and southern New York. Actually, more central and northern New York. Southern New York right here for New York City looks to not get any snow for right now. Most of the deterministic and ensembles are strongly in better agreement here that the snow line is going to be just north of New York City. Now, this could still change. We're going to look at this a little bit closely in just a second of exactly who is going to get what and who is just going to get rain. A little bit of rain and snow and moisture left behind in that system on uh, Monday and Tuesday over portions of Tennessee, Kentucky, and West Virginia. But this system is going to be out of here pretty quickly by, say, early uh, Tuesday morning, right around actually Tuesday or Monday night, say right around 10 or 11 o'clock on Monday into Tuesday. All right, and then the next system 
Yes, you get a break in here. There's not much to talk about on Monday. That's because there's a shortwave ridge that's going to develop because our next system is going to be developing here. In fact, let's back this up right here, right around four in the, about two and three in the morning for mountain and um, central time here. Look at the snowfall for northern panhandle of Texas. Going to be coming down pretty good. You got the darker blue colors. That's what we look for for heavy snowfall that comes down. And then this is really going to amplify. Look at all this snow right here. By about, say, 9 o'clock on Tuesday morning. Going to be snowing pretty good here. So if you're um, headed out early to go to work, to do any commuting, going to be pretty um, sluggish out there. A lot of slippery conditions, white out conditions perhaps because the snowfall rates are going to be coming down pretty good. Northern Texas and um, say Oklahoma here by say 3 and 4 o'clock in the afternoon for your evening commute could also get impacted by moderate to heavy snowfall. Just maybe you want to stay home, um, keep the kids home from school because the snow is going to be coming down pretty good. And also down here for the deep south, there's going to be severe weather. Yes, we have a neat Neapolitan storm, that's what I call him. I don't know if other people call them Neapolitan storms. That's because we're going to have severe weather and some wickedness, warm temperatures for the deep south, and even for portions of Oklahoma and northern Texas, you're going to see snow. So two seasons in one storm, that's what we call Neapolitan. Okay, I hope you guys like the term that I gave, right? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, okay, so this is for about 10 o'clock about 9 or 10 o'clock central and eastern time still snowing pretty good this goes into the great lakes by wednesday into thursday um again this is the second storm system that we're watching closely this seems to be the bigger one of the weekend storm that seems to kind of be not really as organized as what we thought right not much of a nor'easter like we were thinking but this one it still looks to be somewhat of a nor'easter, except it's not really going to be in the extreme northeast. So we can just say a Midwest, Colorado, Rocky, low track kind of system. But still in all, there's going to be some big impacts. We're talking sleet, freezing rain here in pink and the orange colors. And then, of course, right in here is where we are talking about the moderate to heavy snowfall that, that is anticipated. And, and let me back this up. Right along this cold front right here in the free warm sector, we're also going to be talking about the threat for severe weather. Maybe tornadoes, damaging winds, and maybe some hail with that. So, yes, more severe weather for the Deep South. It's been pretty active so far this uh, winter uh, with severe weather episodes down here in including the Selma, Alabama tornado that impacted your guys' area about a week and a half ago. That was pretty hard to see. Actually, about a week-ish ago, big time severe weather down there. So I just hope you guys are safe and you're ready for the next one because it's going to kind of bite you again with more severe weather. And then this goes into the northeast again with snowfall. This one does not look to be as impactful as the weekend storm, but still in all, we're going to see a lot of snow, some strong winds, and some heavy rainfall for that region. And that's for... Um, for Wednesday and Thursday next week. And then after that, maybe another system tries to drop down, but guidance is very uncertain on that system. The GFS, let me go through this very quickly. Again, self-explanatory. We talked about the system here, the GFS and the European model in pretty good agreement on the weekend snowstorm. And that goes right into Pennsylvania and New York by the time we go into Sunday. That's out of there. And then we're keep being an eye on this one for the Midwest, for Oklahoma, for um, Kansas, for Missouri. Could get hit pretty good, actually, for St. Louis for Tuesday and a Wednesday, for the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes by Wednesday morning and a Wednesday night. And that continues all the way into, say, uh, Wednesday night and a Thursday for the Northeast. Very similar to track with the European model. So there is pretty good agreement here on both of the deterministic model runs as of today. And then, of course, we might see another another frontal uh, passage right up here in the northern tier of the U.S. But again, that's pretty uncertain as of right now. And again, the best guess for right now would probably lean towards the European model. Probably not much going on once this very cold air moves in out of the north. All right, the ensembles really quickly because again, I want to be as accurate as possible. I just don't want to be looking at one model, folks. We got to kind of look at the ensembles, which is the members. How many uh, members are 
start agreeing on the same thing, right? If your members are all over the place and you don't have a good forecast, you want the members of the operational GFS to agree on something. So 20 members run the GFS model and we can see the 20 of those members do strongly indicate for next week, we're gonna have a pretty serious snowstorm for the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes and then maybe even for the Northeast. Interesting enough, the um, GEFS model wants to surface low still further south right along the I-95 corridor. So the, the deterministic GFS model might be a little bit of an outlier here as some of the other members here still in indicate there might still be some snow here over New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and maybe for the extreme Northeast versus the deterministic runs uh, did not really indicate that was going to be the case as we can see here, really struggling on the deterministic versus the ensemble. All right. Closer look at that again, here is a snow line again where the snow and rain meet. And again, on this model, it shows a lot of snow for uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. But again, there is some uncertainty in regards to that. I wish I can give you guys an exact forecast, but I've got to be careful on these types of scenarios. All right, so the European Ensemble, we don't have precipitation on this because they do not give me precipitation forecast on the European. It's giving me geopotential height, but same ordeal, surface low in the, is it in the exact same spot like the GEFS Ensemble showed, and the European has a pretty good agreement as well with the GEFS that the surface low would be riding right along the coast here. But again, little deviations to the north or south will make a huge difference. I had some comments earlier that I did review saying, oh, we didn't get nothing with this last storm. Um, David, it was hype casting. These systems are really hard to track, folks, so please have respect and please understand, okay? These are not easy to track, all right? Try forecasting like me. You'll be in the same shoes like I do, so please um, realize that very closely. Forecasts are not always exact. It's just a guidance. Models make mistakes. I make mistakes sometimes, all right? So just understand that, okay? Um, because it really isn't that, um, uh, you know, anyone can get a forecast wrong, right? Or you may be right the whole time, right? We all have different opinions, and so do the models. So the European Ensemble still indicates, again, two systems combined. I'm not just looking at one system. So again, um, look at this for yourself if you want for more information, because we're just using two systems combined, anywhere between three to six inches of snowfall for the Midwest, for the high plains, and for the upper Midwest, and then of course, maybe as much as nine to maybe 15 inches of snowfall in the 10 and one ratio side of things for Pennsylvania, for New York, for um, Vermont, for New Hampshire, for Massachusetts, for Connecticut, and also for Maine that could get the most snow out of this. Again, this is the ensemble. 51 members run the European forecast. So a lot of members there agreeing on maybe a foot or so. The GEFS also in good agreement here, maybe as much as 10 to 15 inches of snow with maybe three to six inches of snow for the Midwest and the upper Midwest. Now, really quickly, before this video gets too long, I wanted to show you all the severe weather side of things because severe weather is going to be a pretty big deal uh, on Tuesday into Wednesday. That's kind of the timeline here that we're looking at our next threat for severe weather. So the European Ensemble here, I'm just using the European, I'm not using the GFS because the European seems to be a little bit more accurate overall. Not by much, but a little bit helps. So we can see surface winds here. The first ingredient will be the winds. Of course, a lot of directional speed shear here in the low levels, the mid levels of the atmosphere. We have southeasterly winds here noted. You know, winds are doing this, coming off the Gulf, and then we have our front. We have our boundary right here, and then we have a cold front right back in here, and so this is going to really lead to a lot of shear. When you take a look at the 850 millibar winds, this is at 5,000 feet. Southern winds here at 60 to 70 knots that is very strong and then when we go higher up we got southwesterly winds at 60 to 70 to even 80 knots so we just came we just got winds from the southeast at the surface 
two southwesterly winds in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. So we got winds doing this, folks, and that means a lot of directional shear. We have a lot of concerns here for maybe the chances of discrete storms. And this time around, these could become tornadic. So yeah, keep an eye on day five, and we'll look at that in just a second. And of course, the moisture here throughout the period, we're going to see some moisture advection with dew points in the upper 50s to mid 60s, just perfect and primed enough for at least a conditional tornado threat here from central Mississippi, central Alabama, southward into the Gulf Coast here of Louisiana and Florida. All right, um, instability. That's the only thing that is kind of messy right now. We're not looking at very good quality um, instability, anywhere between maybe 100 to 200 joules per kilogram. Better instability um, quality down here for the Deep South, like such as, say, Biloxi, Mississippi, as well as New Orleans, uh, Baton Rouge might see better instability. So the threat for tornadoes here might be a little higher than areas like further north, because again, you got cooler air here, you got more um, cold air damming and that might may mean a more stable surface layer at the surface all right i wanted to show you all the storm prediction center because they have issued a slight risk for severe weather we can see that there a 15 percent chance for day five so i'm agreeing on this and so are they so we got to keep an eye on this one this could be our next real oomph severe weather event. This could be uh, an enhanced risk. This could just stay slight. The last one, fortunately, never went enhanced. That's good. It stayed slight. And so we'll see if the same thing happens with this slight risk, if it remains that way or if it gets upgraded later on in day two or day three outlooks. All right. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, though, I sure hope you really enjoyed the video and the discussion, everybody. I hope I did a pretty good job at this because I did look over my comments yesterday and there was some confusion about, oh, David, we got green grass here. We didn't get snow, you know, um, again. Again, these forecasts are not the exact thing, okay? This is only based on model guidance. Please refer to your local National Weather Service and your local officials, including the Weather Channel, for the best latest information for where you're at, okay? Because again, I could only provide my opinion to you all and you may not like it or you may like it. So please understand that very much when you watch my videos that this is just guy model guidance and not the exact forecast. Just because I said three to six inches of snow for the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes does not mean you're going to get three to six inches. It may be one to two inches or it may be five to eight inches. You know, this is just model guidance and ensemble forecasts that you really uh, need to be aware of. Okay. So I hope that cleared the confusion up in this video. But anyways, if you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing, sharing this. It really helps out. You guys have done so well at sharing my last video. We got like a hundred shares. So that thank you for that, uh, folks, because again, at the end of the day, I am here to providing the best weather information for where you're at, as well as leave a comment in the section below. And I'll be back with you more tomorrow with more details on this upcoming winter mess.